In this video, I'd like to control some dimensions and put them in a variable table and use that on an assembly drawing with a parts list. Let's get started. Because I have these parts open in their own windows, I can get to those windows just by double clicking on the part. Notice that this is a synchronous part. I can turn off or on all of the dimensions using the PMI collector in the Pathfinder. Or I can control them one by one just turning on the dimensions that I need. Because I want to control individual dimensions, I may want to have special names for them. There are several ways to change the names for dimensions. One way would be to select a dimension from the list and press F2. This allows you to key in a name. You can also access the rename function through the right mouse button menu and rename. While we're here in the right mouse button menu, you can also show the values for the dimensions, show the names for the dimensions, or show the formulas which will give you the name and the value. To control these dimensions in the variable table, let's go to the Tools tab and Variables. The Variables table is a very powerful tool. It allows you to control dimensions and other parametric variables associated with your parts. You can also lock or unlock dimensions right from the table also control particular values of dimensions and variables, units, write formulas, establish or range for variables, and write comments to explain how the variables or formulas are being used. The expose column allows a variable from a part to be accessed externally, for example, from a parts list, which is what we're going to do. So in this case, we want the link dimension to show up in our parts list. We'll flip back to the assembly with Control Tab. And here we can make a change to the part by activating this part in place. The gray part is not open in a separate window. So when I double click it, I'm activating this part in the assembly. And I can make changes here. Notice that this is an ordered part and I can get to its dimensions by double clicking on a feature. To change a dimension, I'll just single click on it and change it to 5. To exit the part and get back to the assembly, I'll click the red X. Now let's create an assembly drawing from the new menu. Create a drawing of the active model. Select your template and place a parts list. The prompt bar is asking me to click in the drawing view, and I'll do that and place the parts list. You notice that the parts list shows up, but it doesn't have a length column. So I select inside the parts list and go to properties. In the properties dialog, I go to the columns tab and then find the property I want to put on the parts list. That would be link as an exposed variable. Add a column for that value and say OK. This adds a length for both of the parts in the assembly. Just to make sure this is working properly, let's go back to the assembly and make some changes. So Control Tab to get back to the assembly. Double click to activate this part. Single click to change this dimension. X to switch back to the assembly double click to activate the gray part, double click to show the dimensions, single click to edit the dimension, and again red X to get out. If you had changed one of these parts in a separate window, you would need to update the assembly. So let's do that quickly just to demonstrate. Right click and open, change the dimension here, flip back to the assembly, and press Alt U to update the assembly. The assembly updates to reflect the new size of the part based on the mate relationships established already for these parts. Now we'll flip back to the drawing. Alt F to zoom to fit. We get a warning from Solid Edge that's telling us drawing views are out of date. We get the option to not see this again, but I like to see when drawing views are out of date. Just click on the Update Views button. 
Solid Edge gives us a list of the changes that were made since the last time we had the drawing open. So we'll just say close and read the new values in the parts list. And they have indeed updated. So we've seen a lot in this brief demonstration. Changing parts in their own window, changing parts in the assembly window, updating the assembly, creating a drawing, creating a parts list, adding a column with a variable to the parts list and making changes to synchronous and ordered parts in the same assembly. Thanks for watching.